What is going on guys and welcome back to yet another beloved pickups video. It's been way too long because obviously life has got in the way and all that. <laughs> and uh, we are just before, the weekend before, uh, Doncaster Video Game Market. Cannot wait for that. Uh, by the way, I've not, I've not like shaved that side of my head off or anything. Um, I've just put that bit out of the way because it, I don't know, I've put one side out of the way because it's kind of less hassle. Kind of. <laughs> but yeah, I'm absolutely stoked for Doncast Video Game Market. I will be there, of course. Um, I've got a couple of transactions I already lined up. Obviously, uh, a few magazines from the Sega Mags guy, Mark. So, see you there, man. Uh, do like a, a deal there. Uh, I've got some like magazines put away and whatever. And I'll see if there's any more that take my fancy. Um, and then also, um, I'm getting some um, magazines, some like comics uh, from... Nathan, uh, Every Bit Gaming. Uh, it's, there's an online store, so do check that out. So I'll show you this pickup I got on eBay because it kind of completes the set from the comics that I'm going to get from him. So this is a Resident Evil one, of course. <laughs> is it, it just can't be like one pickup video without a resi thing in, can the guys with me? Uh, so this is like, it's brand new. It's like new old stock. So it's all sealed and everything. I've had a little flick through it. So it came out in fall 1998. Um, they're quite hard to get hold of to be honest, um, especially like for the full set So I've got like the other four issues that complete these from Nathan So cannot wait to get them and then obviously read through all of them So for this month's reading we also have Retro Gamer and We've got the Bitmap Brothers gracing the front cover of this one And all the best PS2 games as voted by you and all that lot So yeah, that should be a decent issue I'm actually after that, I'll show you uh, what it is It's on the... Um, on the Neo Geo Pocket, I'd really love one of them. Um, I like the blue camo one, especially. Uh, Metal Slug First Mission. That ain't the price that they're selling for, don't worry. <laughs> That's what uh, they uh, chill out games, that is. They're, I find them fairly expensive, to be fair. Um, obviously, they're like top end prices, pretty much. Uh, but that is. I'm, I've been after Metal Slug. Um, can't remember how much I've seen it for on eBay. I've seen it for anywhere between 50, 60, 70 quid plus all complete and stuff but yeah i've played a bit of metal slug briefly but since um going to arcade club absolutely loved it there was a there was like a neo geo machine so i played um it was like puzzle bobble i was addicted to that one and i was addicted to the metal slug games so yeah they really are good i'll tell you what's on my want list um probably keep an eye out for it at the doncaster video game market i don't know if they'll be there or anything but I don't know if it'll be there, but CEX sell it for, I believe, like, 32 quid on the PS2. The Metal Slug Anthology, and you get, like, I can't remember how many you get in it. I don't know if it's five or six games or something like that. You get quite a few. Um, so, yeah. Um, on the original Xbox, you can get, like, obviously Metal Slug 3 and 4, but obviously I'd rather, like, have the lot. Um, just nice and handy to play, like, just on a disc. So I think I might look out for that, the Anthology for PS2. So that is on the want list. So this is also another pickup because last night um, I've been like, pfft, I've been like on and off sleeping a little bit. Um, I've been so tired. I've been doing like full days on at work, smashing through them. And then yesterday went down to Leeds. Um, yeah, I went for 15 years of Dirty Sanchez. If you guys haven't seen Dirty Sanchez, it's basically the UK version of Jackass. It's absolutely incredible. I've watched it since I was 13 years old because uh, my granddad had season one on DVD. And um, I was like fascinated by it. I was like, oh my God, are they them on MTV who hurt themselves? And I was like, granddad, can I borrow it? And he's like, no, you can't. <laughs> and then uh, he, he had, his, had his DVD um, stash upstairs and whatever. And before I went home like that night, my nana said to me, go on, go get it, go borrow it, he won't know it. So went and got it, fell in love with it. And then obviously like not long after from like HMV, um, as soon as they come out, I'd get, got like the second, third series, whatever, movie and all that. So massive fanatic, I really am. Um, so I got some really cool merch, including this top. So 15 years of filth. And I believe that is when, I think that's Daniel Joyce or something, when he has like a beer enema and then he just... Yeah, sprays it out. <laughs> oh, it was unreal. So, yeah, this is what this event was. 15 Years of Dirty Sanchez Live. I got that signed by Pritchard and Dainton. Um, I managed to just... Someone was just kind of giving these out. There was only, like, a dozen of them or something in the crowd. So, yeah, there was it was interviews, unseen clips, uh, footage and stuff, hidden footage, audience Q&A and meet and greet. So, yeah, tickets were, like, 20 quid. Uh, so obviously I just had to get myself down there, I decided to drive myself, it's like an hour and a half from me. This is cool because it's like a newspaper headline and uh, it says there, 
Um, let me try and read it from upside down. This is awesome. An MTV star has apologised to Hollywood star Dolph... Oh, I can never say it. Lundgren after Euron hating on him in a booze fueled rampage on a private jet. And that was actually Pritchard, that one. Matt Pritchard. Um, yeah, he told the story of it as well. It was, I think it was like during the Gumball Rally while there was like travelling. Um, so there was like him and like a bunch of like big celebrities, whatever, um, on a private jet. And uh, yeah, he, he needed to piss basically. And he went to the uh, like front door of the plane, started pissing up it, and then was like, no, 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 you know, don't do that, whatever. And then uh, he turned round, and then who was in front of him? Uh, Dolph Lundgren, the one who plays He-Man. Uh, and he pissed up him, and then, you know, he's telling him to stop or whatever. And he was like, I'm sorry, whatever. He apologised after and all that. So, um, yeah, um, he, he told that story as well. So, yeah, it's proper cool. Really, really awesome if you're a big Sanchez fan like myself. So, um, yeah, I'll show you a picture on screen um, of the picture that I got from my phone. Um, I gave my phone to Matt Stocks, which is like their, um, the, the guy who like, hosts it with them kind of thing. And then I also paid for, obviously, the T-shirt. And I got a Polaroid picture signed, which is proper ace, man. Proper cool. So I got that signed. My mouth's, like, hanging over. And I'm like... Because it's because we was all going, like, way. <laughs> and I always look like an absolute goon. Not photogenic whatsoever. Um, I'll show you that, anyway, with the original picture. I'll have shown it. Um, and then I also got a DVD already signed by them uh, so it's the rise and falls of Pritchard and Dayton obviously there's Pancho and Joycey who are also part of Dayton Sanchez but Pritchard and Dayton that's where it started and it was them two who did obviously the show so yeah it was, it was an absolutely wicked night really was I really enjoyed that felt amazing to finally meet them I was totally fangirling got a coffee to keep me awake because I've been like drowsy because I've been like so busy it's like really caught me today um so if I went to Leeds Guess where else I went before the event? This is a sex shop, isn't it? <laughs> yes. I'll have five quid's worth then. <laughs> That's right, you got it. CX, of course. Um, right, I'm going to show you... Um, it was like a minute or so of me talking or something in my car because I planned to take the GoPro in with me in CEX and guess who forgot? <laughs> so I'm really, really sorry. I forgot to take the GoPro and the chest harness in with me. I was I was that like stoked and excited to go to CEX and then Nando's and then the event. I just totally forgot. I don't, I don't know how, but I, th I think to be honest, I was trying to get over the shock of the um, the parking price that I had to pay to keep it in a, a parking centre. <laughs> but yeah, here is the footage of a pickup I got from a charity shop. What's going on guys? So today is Friday the 22nd of February. I'm heading to Leeds uh, to go and see Dirty Sanchez live. Um, if you don't know what Dirty Sanchez is, it's basically like the UK version of Jackass and they're doing like a live show. Just Pritchard and Dayton from the show. Um, it's not so much, it's not like stunts or anything, it's more like interviews, uh, lost hidden footage, stuff like that. Just basically having a laugh and uh, then they're doing like meet and greet after and there's also merch to buy. So been buzzing for this, it was only like 20 odd quid for a ticket. So I'm about to drive an hour and a half to Leeds and then before I go get a cheeky Nando's before that, I'm going to nip in the Leeds CEX and I've also, I'll show you what I've got to take there. This was an absolute score from a local charity shop. So I've got this bag of stuff, right? the three quid and these are amiibos obviously i think the staff at the shop probably just thought they were just average mario figures and didn't look at the bottom of them so we've got bowser and it obviously says amiibo on the bottom we've got yoshi and um, we have this random i don't know what it is oh it's disney infinity i can't tell you what that one is guys i'm not sure so Obviously, I'm going to hand that over and then see what they look it up as. I don't know. <laughs> um, I've only just noticed it's Disney Infinity. Uh, we've got Mario Amiibo. We have Kirby Amiibo. And then, last but not least, we have Wario. So, I've totaled up just the Amiibos, a handful of Amiibos on CEX. I should be getting a £54 voucher. That is wicked. Off three quid. That is sick. There was also these inside here. I have absolutely no idea what these are or anything. I don't know if they might be from like a board game or something. I have absolutely no idea, but there was in with them. So <laughs> I'll just be slinging them to one side or whatever. 
putting them in the spares thing, whatever. So yeah, I'll be trading in these Amiibos. So fingers crossed, guys. Plus that whatever I get for that Disney Infinity um, character might not be much, but we should be due 54 quid. So let's get to Leeds CEX. So that was obviously before I left for Leeds and I was stoked because I, I obviously looked them up, um, looked up the Amiibos. Um, so it's a handful of Amiibos. Um, like I say, it's just crazy. Uh, the shop owners obviously thought they were just standard figures and just put them in a bag for three quid in like a freezer bag. So, uh, yeah, we had Mario, Wario, uh, Yoshi, Bowser and Kirby. And there was also a Disney Infinity character, which I didn't know who it was, which obviously said in that clip. Um, but the member of staff checked it and they only gave 60p credit for that. But it's no use to me, so I just slung it in there. So, £54.60, right? So I put it towards a game that was 60 quid. I've just realised that I've totally spoiled it. Duh. Because <laughs> I had all the games was there. Right, so yeah, it's not like Mega Retro or anything, but it's something towards my beloved Pokemon collection because I adore Pokemon. It is Pokemon Heart Gold for the DS, all complete with a Poker Walker. I genuinely could not turn this down because it was in such good nick and it's something that obviously I'd rather not order on CX online. And if I didn't do that, I'd obviously be paying top end on eBay or the groups and stuff because this literally, 60 quid's a lot for this. Um, obviously, it's got the Poker Walker with it, but... It literally goes for 60 like on the groups and on eBay so while I had the opportunity so it's for 60 quid I had to pay like five pound 60 towards I think it was so absolutely not bad at all so that's obviously like big chunky but funky manual for the poker walker and then this is the game I was a little bit puzzled at first because um, the manual says UKV and then the cat says EUR, and I was kind of like, I was thinking, hmm, what? I don't know if it can uh, focus in a little bit. But yeah, I was a little bit puzzled by it, but the um, the person serving me, they said, oh, they all say it. And um, I did do like a really quick like, eBay search, and the carts on eBay were like EUR as well. I was just a little confused and didn't want to like bugger it up, getting a different cart or whatever. So there's, they've got them still with the... Um, what is it? Club Nintendo points, like not even, not scratched off or whatever. Really, really nice, Nick. And then just obviously your uh, precaution, health and safety manuals. Um, this one originally, it had all this lot that I'm showing you now, but it didn't originally have um, like the insert. But they had two copies in luckily, which was awesome. So she took the insert from that, popped it in this one, which was awesome, man. So yeah, so there's the, the insert. And then we have the poker walker. So we've got that all in very really nice condition. And then there's also a, it's like a spare, um, a spare clip for the poker walker. You know, like the little, just the little black attachment on the back. So, and it's really nice that they've got the, the little baggies with them. So I was absolutely buzzing to get that. Cause I've already got um, Pokemon Soul Silver. So I've been after Heart Gold for ages and uh, I'm really glad I didn't cave in and buy like, um, you know, pay top end price for it. Oh, I was honestly, I was totally due um, a charity shop score. I really was, and uh, really fortunate. I went on my lunch break, uh, managed to grab a really quick break at work. It was uh, on the Thursday, and um, when I was working, I thought, shall I nip in there? And I was like, uh, I'll, I'll give it a go, and whatever. And then, even at a glance, I thought there was just Mario figures, and I looked, I was like, holy shit, these are amiibos! Absolute score, really happy guys. Um, also from that CEX, uh, this was six quid, Xbox 360 game. I've been after it for ages, to be honest, because I've just wanted it, because I, I just thought it was cool. Um, I'll eventually own all these on the Dreamcast itself, but Dreamcast collection, um, I already own, I do already own Sonic Adventure and Crazy Taxi. I don't yet have Sega Bass Fishing or the Space Channel, what is it, Part 2? Yeah, Space Channel 5 Part 2. Um... I would really like the bass fishing, but I think I, I want to try and hold out and get um, the one all box with the fishing rod and whatever. I really would love one of them. If I can manage to source one, they're not the most common things ever, so fingers crossed. And that'll add the manual. I also saw in CEX, um, Scott, Glory Hunter and Lewis Wishwash will know what I'm on about. Um, 
they I think they told me about it um I think it was like during the arcade club week and there was on about Amped Three on the Xbox three sixty. Um it was just like how, how cool like the cutscenes and everything were and like all I don't know, like all anime cartoony whatever and just just some cool stuff in there, like if you search it on YouTube. Um so yeah, they they had it in, they had it in stock in this one for two quid. But took it to the counter and no manual and I was a bit like, fuck's sake. I mean, to be honest, I couldn't really like decide on the spot because there was like a big queue behind me. But maybe I should have picked it up because um, I did do a search on eBay after, and there's a manual on eBay for one ninety nine. I was a bit like, shit, should I just bit the bullet and grabbed it and then just get the manual off eBay for one ninety nine? But yeah, obviously I've, I just like let it go really because um, I mean at the same time maybe just wait and not overpay for it because you know like I say you don't be paying too much uh, but it, like I say it was two quid so. Hopefully I bump into it again in a CEX. I really hope so. But yeah, the Adams three. It would it would have just been just been nice to be honest. I was really close to getting Sega Rally for the Xbox three sixty as well, but uh I think it was like a fiver. Um but I'm just I just wasn't sure. I just thought, is it actually good? Like I've wanted it for a while, but then you know when I thought about it, I was a bit like, uh, eh, because I'm paying cash for this, not voucher and stuff. I was a bit like, uh you know, I, I don't know how it plays and stuff. I'll probably... I don't want to pick up the controller and be like, oh, no, I want to play Sega Rally Championship on Saturn now. <laughs> don't want to be, end up doing that. Um, so I'll look a bit more... i look up about that a bit more. But like I say, my ca local Kabu, it starts this weekend, guys. It wasn't meant to start until the end of next month, end of March. But um, due to, like, phenomenal demand, they've started it up for this Sunday. So cannot wait hopefully it's a decent turnout obviously it might be a bit slow um you know as it until it picks up and whatever um but yeah it's been shared around loads on facebook locally so fingers crossed people will get down there you know sellers and whatever um so it is back to video game hunting at the car boot cannot wait and i will be bringing my gopro promise you because i've not brought you guys any car boot footage and i would love for you guys to see how mental my car boot is like it's just there's just all of us just running and power walking everywhere. <laughs> I don't run, I just like power walk and stuff. But it's so difficult to try and... I, I do well considering, because there's other guys who obviously pick things up. So, um, yeah, it's mental. There's no chill at my car boot whatsoever. No chill. I'm sure at your guys' car boots, there's no chill. You don't get to just go around there strolling with a coffee? Nah, didn't think so. <laughs> Not like we're all chilled now. But anyway, yeah. So hopefully more pickups on the way. I'll show you what I did get though. Local pickups. God, I've, I've had such bad luck with them as well. Like I always, I've missed out on stuff for ages, all the time. Um, so yeah, I actually I got these a uh, little while ago. So these were a fiver each. So I've got. This is a Game Boy camera. <laughs> I thought, you know, for a fiver, I don't mind it. It's all box. It's obviously like a bit tatty and whatever, and it's got it's got some wear on it. It's been opened this end for some reason, not not the top end. That is actually it's got still got most of the Nintendo seal on it. I was saying to my mate actually, you know, before dating sites and internet took over, do you think this is how people sent nudes? <laughs> um, yeah, just a thought. Anyway, <laughs> um, so now I just obviously I want the Game Boy printer. I really want the Game Boy printer. So I'll open this up. It is red colour, this is. So all the inserts are there. And then this is what the bad boy looks like. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. You know what? I, I didn't realise until... Might have been a couple of years ago um, that there was actually a camera and printer. It must have been about a couple of years ago, I realised. Didn't even know about it. I couldn't believe it. I was like gobsmacked. I was like, really? <laughs> I did do a quick check on eBay because I was thinking that's red, the um, what do you call it, the camera, why isn't that one red? But I, I have searched on a few eBay listings and they're blue as well, even on the manual because I don't understand why that isn't red because uh, obviously this product's red. I mean unless the other eBay listings are wrong but yeah from what I can see I don't think it's like the wrong manual or anything. Looks like rather legit. So, uh, yeah, got that for a fiver. Didn't mind that. Um, and I also got another original Game Boy game. Uh, this, this was from a different person. Uh, even came in a protective case. 
Want to guess what it is? Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I didn't think that was too bad. I think CX sell it for like a few quid more or something. So for a fiver, I didn't think it was too bad. It's not like the most high-end Zelda game. But yeah, I thought I'd grab it. Um, it is EUR. That's the uh, little bit of writing on the side of it. As you can probably maybe just about make out. A little bit of fading up there. But yeah, so I thought I'd pick that up. Randomly got this game from a charity shop the other day just for a quid. Um, I used to have it back in the day. Um, <clears throat> so it's a Space Invaders game. Um, it's by Tatio. I, th I think I think the pronouncer like Tatio. It's Space Invaders Invasion Day. I used to have this as a kid years ago. Um, really random and everything. But um, yeah, it's, it's just really cool. I think you can play as either a guy or a woman or something like that. A teenager who lost his friends to the Space Invaders. A camera woman searching for a missing boyfriend. A police officer whose partner was killed in action. Three characters. There we go, there's three. So yeah, if, if you enjoy your Space Invaders games and you just want like an obviously a, a cheesy little, you know, alternate version to it, I'd recommend that. It's just it's just a laugh. Um, if you see it for 50p or a quid, I, I would say it's worth picking up. Just for a laugh, really. Um, yeah, so... It's a little blast from the past for me, that. What we got next? This one is a eBay pickup. Uh, because I did order it um, from CEX a little while ago, but it turned up with no manual. And I just, like, <laughs> I just couldn't be asked. I just I just couldn't be asked to order another one. <laughs> and, like you say, I, I took it back and all that. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to resort to eBay. Um, paid pretty much the going rate. I think I paid about 13, 14 quid for it. But, um... Some of the sold listings have been 20, 25 quid. Would not pay that much for it at all. It's Theme Hospital. I'd actually, I've actually like not played it. I've give it a go. I'll tell you about that in a minute. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd actually not played it. I played um, Theme Park World. I was obsessed with that on PS1 as a kid. Absolutely loved it. So um, obviously in this one, you've got like a hospital. Um, over 30 weird diseases to diagnose, including hairyitis, bloaty head and slap tongue. To heal with emergencies and epidemics as they arise and research and develop your own cures and um yeah i can't tell you like too much about it because obviously like i didn't grow up playing it and whatever um so it's all really really nice condition this even the manual proper nice condition um so yeah went to give it a go it was like the other week um and i just could not get used to the controls like i was on like the tutorial bit that the start you out on you know ps2 controller not complicated at all, is it? It really isn't. It shouldn't be anyway. Um, I even had the instructions. You actually need the instructions for this. You know what I mean? I had them in front of me with the controller layout and whatever. And it, it was telling me to build a GP surgery, a GP department bit in the hospital. So managed to plonk that down. And then you have to place the doctor's desk. Managed to do that. Got a cabinet down. And then it's like, place a chair for the patient. And... I just could not place it down. Like I, I don't know if they like want enough space or something, but I was moving it everywhere, and I ended up seeing my ass and turning it off. <laughs> I just couldn't. Um, I messaged Mark. He's a massive um, theme park and theme hospital fan and whatever. Mark Joa, the Sega Max guy, and that he's like, oh yeah, you know, it's the non-PC version. The console versions are like renowned for like the worst controls and all that. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll give it another go when I can. But yeah. Saw my ass and turned it off. I was raging. I was like, uh, I was like, patients can fucking sit on the floor if they want to get seen. <laughs> Can't place this chair down. It's bullshit. <laughs> I was going mad. <laughs> you know, I would just rant to myself. You know, I would just rant to myself, guys. All right, this one is something different and non-gaming related, but it deserves some credit and it deserves to be in this video because you guys might be fans. Um, so it's an absolute bargain from CEX. I got it for 22 quid from CEX um, on eBay. Obviously, the price like seemed to shoot up a little bit when uh, Stan and Ollie came out, uh, the movie, based on Laurel and Hardy. So I've actually got the full collection. Because before, in the past, when I've watched it, my uncle has owned this for ages. I've, I think he paid like like 50 or something from HMV. I'm, t I'm talking a few years back. Um, but yeah only 22 quid from cx and it's like got all the shorts all the episodes um which are like 20 minutes long or whatever 15 20 minutes long and then all the movies that they did as well so absolutely sick boxer if you're a fan guys i don't know if the price has gone up at all 
Because um, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know if with the release of the movie, people would have obviously seen money being in it um, and then trade it in. But I believe CX only gave like 11 quid. I think that was trade as well, I can't remember. But it's 22 quid. When I last bought it, anyway, when I bought it from CX. So, uh, yeah, absolutely awesome. Right, I've got some really nice Sega to show you guys. So this was off for uh, Sam. Um, him and his dad come to our car, but they have um, their own stall and whatever. And uh, they, they sell games on and all that. So, um, like, they, they do me some deals sometimes when I buy, like, games from them. So, uh, yeah, Sam picked these up in a pickup and... Um, he showed me like a bunch of games or whatever, and he's like, anything you're after. So I picked out these games because, um, yeah, just thought they, they looked really cool. I, I really wanted them for the collection. So these are four games, and I believe I believe I did like, I think he said 50 all in, I think, and that was obviously with postage. It was quite a while ago I bought these. So these games that took my fancy were Pac Mania for the Mega Drive, because it just looked cool. <laughs> uh, just a, obviously a a bit more of a it's like a 3d variation of pac-man pac-man can now jump over those pesky ghosts who are hungrier than ever help him gobble his way through mazes of incredible shapes and colors as the ghosts try and outwit him so yeah a bit more of a like kind of advanced kind of version kind of thing with like the, the map layouts and whatever um but i mean i don't know if you call it advanced if they allow you to jump might make that a bit easier but like i say if there's more ghosts i don't know uh, so yeah, looking forward to trying that out. And then these next three are Master System games. Um, big fan of this series, so I'm collecting like all the different games. Outrun Europa. So I think that goes for a few quid. I'm sure that's in the twenties. That what I've seen on eBay. So that looks ace. That Bla blaze a trail across Europe in the world's most powerful vehicles. Only your skill and determination will get you all the way to your destination, Berlin. So they're all really lovely condition. They're all really nice. So I'm looking forward to trying that one out. Because I already own um, Outrun 2 for the uh, original Xbox. I picked that up at the cab ages ago. Um, but it's not the Coast to Coast one. It's not the really expensive one. It's really weird though because I'm sure you can get the Coast to Coast one on PS2 cheap for like 6 quid or something. Really weird how it's like expensive on the original Xbox. So the next game we've got is Asterix and the Secret Mission. I've not probably played the Asterix games, so I'm not sure if it, this is an exclusive one or not for the Master System because I know that there are some on the Mega Drive as well. But I thought it'd be cool to pick that one up. And then the other one is Asterix. <laughs> nothing, nothing after that, just, just Asterix. So I thought I'll, I'll grab them. Nice games to kick off the Asterix collection. This one, guys. Something I never usually buy. Never usually go for. Never usually get import games or anything. But got a Japanese one for the Super Famicom. What the hell, Holster? What? What you been buying? So this was an eBay purchase. It is Sweet Home. The Super Famicom. Really lovely condition. I've opened it slightly just so I, I can obviously get in the box easy to show you guys. Um... I would love to learn a bit of Japanese, I really would. You know, just to kind of get the gist of, well, don't know how long it would take to read Japanese fluently, but it'd be cool to just kind of get the gist of what some of the letters are, at least. Um, out of all languages, I'd want to learn Japanese. Out of all of them, I really would. So this is really lovely and complete. I've not seen um, any other decent complete ones on eBay uh, when I've looked anyway. So, obviously got the cart there. And then behind the cart, there's a few little, uh, like, instruction booklets and stuff. That's about, obviously, the AC stuff. And then a bit there. And then this is the manual. The only thing with the manual, that's all it is. That's all it is, just a little bit. Looks like something was stuck on it or something. That's the only thing I can read on it, Capcom logo. <laughs> but everything else is really nice. So I don't mind that too much um, about that. So my reason, what what's my reason for buying this? It's because Sweet Home was the inspiration for Resident Evil. And I was just fascinated from, uh, you know, the gameplay that I've seen of it. 
so I thought, oh, you know what? As a collector's piece, I really would love this. I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to have a look for it. So I saw this really nice copy, and I just thought, I'm going to go for it. So absolutely buzzing to have this. Just a really nice, just a really nice collector's piece, that. So really happy to have Sweet Home. That inspired Resident Evil. I've got another big hitter, bigger hitter game coming up. <laughs> So I'll show you that soon. Uh, for now, we've got another Outrun game. I was really happy. This is a CX purchase, this, from a while ago. Outrun 2019. It's crazy how, like, back then, during the retro gaming days, uh, it's still got the sticker there, this was actually all futuristic. And here we are, in 2019. So, yeah, this turned up with a manual, so I was absolutely buzzing. Absolutely so glad. The... Uh, the hang tab is uh, pretty bent and stuff, but oh well. I could always just switch it out at some point. So, yeah, this was made in 1993. That was the year I was born. <laughs> Crazy. So, uh, yeah, it just looks like proper Asus does. Something different and futuristic. And I absolutely love the artwork. I think it's incredible. So, Outrun 2019, guys. What a really nice um, addition to the Outrun collection. I can't remember how much it was. It was something like... I'm sure it was about seven or eight quid. Surprised it's not more, to be honest. Um, this one was gifted by a friend, uh, Alex, uh, when I went to see him in London. Um, so, yeah, it is it is American, and he couldn't get it playing on his OG Xbox. And uh, he was like, I don't know, it's no good to me if you can get it working, you know. Um, or if not, it would be a nice collector's piece for you. And obviously, I can't get it working because I don't have a region free OG Xbox. Maybe I will one day, I don't know. But still, um, I, I would absolutely love to play this if I can get the chance. I would love to. So it is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X or times 2. 2 times, whatever, however you guys want to say it. So uh, obviously you can see the, the teen rating. So it is American. So yeah, it's basically Tony Hawk's um, 1 and 2 on the OG Xbox. It's crazy. 24 levels, 5 exclusive new levels, plus all the levels from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Improved skate park editor, creator skater, incredible graphics. Uh, skate to tracks from Rage Against the Machine, Naughty by Nature and Palmon 5000. <laughs> under, under the teen rating. Blood, mild lyrics, suggestive themes. <laughs> so that would be absolutely sick to play, it really would. Nice and complete as well. So I think it's American exclusive. I don't know about any of the other places like Australia or whatever. Um, but yeah, I know this is obviously American and not our region. But still, if only it was our region, so it'd be so easy to play. But hopefully one day I'll get to play that. I think that's sick. That is really cool. All right, guys. So a few cheeky additions for the beloved Sega Saturn collection. A console which I think does not get the credit it deserves. It Not at all. It's awesome. Um, so this is a game I've been after for ages, been after it for so long. Ordered it from CEX because they had one in, but no manual. Uh, but there's a guy on the groups selling a few games. Not like a regular seller or anything, I'd never seen his name before, so I did pay, obviously, goods and services just in case whatsoever. Um, whatever, I mean. <laughs> um, so, yeah, bought three games off him. Uh, so the first one is Gex, right? And I did say to him, I said, are all the manuals okay? Like, no graffiti in them or anything? Because uh, you know how picky I am. And, you know, guys, some other people are picky as well. I'm not the only one, because obviously I'm a collector, so I don't want graffiti in the manuals. I like them um, as if I've just bought them kind of thing. Um, so he said, yeah, yeah, manuals are all all right. So I'm flicking through. Um, I think I might have a picture handy to show you. I'll show you on screen right now. Um, of what it l did look like. Um, it was bothering me that much. <laughs> I mean, you guys, it, depending on your opinions, you might have think I've made it worse or something, but I've basically tip -X'd it out. I've, like, neatly tip -X'd it. You can see, obviously, with the lighting. I mean, I don't know if you guys think I've done the wrong thing or something, but I'd rather have it tip -X'd out than, than have pen graffiti on it. That's just me, so... I did that to it, basically. <laughs> I've sabotaged the old passwords and graffiti. But apart from that, this is fine and the other games are fine. Uh, but yeah, it, it was just a proper letdown. But if I'd have paid like full price, I would have said 
I want to send this back and whatever, but um, he, he wanted 20 quid for this, and um, so I, I didn't mind at all, because I say CX do it for 22 quid, but they've got like one in stock, last time I checked anyway, no manual. Um, on eBay, it's been selling for like 40 or something like that. Crazy, crazy money. But I absolutely loved Gex on the PS1, so I'm looking forward to playing this on the Saturn. I think it looks ace. I think it looks really nice on the Saturn. So, we've got Gex, finally. The other two games, Primal Rage. I don't know much about this, but all I can say, um, you know, when, when I buy loads of these games, I've not played them, but obviously I've wanted them and everything, but obviously they look cool. <laughs> From the screenshots look great really nice and complete i've checked these manuals no graffiti whatever in these so these are fine um i actually feel better about the, the gex manual I, I really do to be honest um i think i've done the right thing for me anyway by tip x it out i reckon so so the last one really random one is trash it um i think it's out on the ps1 as well still got an original sega sticker there Oh my god, you need like steroids to open these, <laughs> you need to be like on roids and everything to open these cases. Just saying, just warning you. Uh, really massive, chunky but funky manual on this one. Uh, I don't know what the objective is. Trash it is an orgy of destruction that will set pulses racing in the most original arcade action in recent years. Bla based on the exploits of Jack Hammer, Trash it offers the player the opportunity to destroy mammoth buildings, monumental structures and pulsating power plants in the ultimate frenzy of... Devastation and vandalism. Your palms will sweat, your veins bulge as you go through level after level of challenging gameplay. Be big, be bold, and choose your weapon. Bring the house down. So, yeah. There, there is a time limit, though, on it. I don't like time limits. That gives me anxiety just looking at them. <laughs> so, yeah, it sounds like you have to kind of vandalise stuff. See, sometimes I have to read the descriptions on the back to you guys because I can't tell you much about it. Because I buy them to play. Because I haven't played them before. <laughs> so these next few. I'm a part of a group on Facebook called um, Retro Game Swap Shop. Um, I'm trying to remember what I even swapped for these. So I've got three PS1 games here. All complete. Decent nick. Okay, pretty much. Um, so I basically swapped an untested original Xbox controller. Um, a couple of um, DS... Uh, yeah, kind of DS carry cases, Mario ones that I just got from the car boot. You know, nothing of massive value or anything. Because obviously these games aren't of big value or anything like that. And then I think it was like just a couple of like little Mario figures as well. Something like that. Just a, a little bundle. And I think it was also a guide to Super Mario Galaxy 1. I had the guide to that. Um, originally picked that up for like, it was literally 20p off the car boot. It's on one of my previous pickups videos from months ago. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Not a huge value of games, and then obviously a bit of postage on top. So they didn't cost me too much, and then obviously the guy posted these for me. So, yeah, first one, <laughs> it's got Pamela Anderson in, that's the only reason why I bought it. <laughs> VIP. Um, I don't know if you watch a, a channel called Cadicarus, uh, but he did um, a, a video on how bad this is. <laughs> it is like pretty bad, but it, it's just funny. Um, so, yeah, it's just literally like a a first person kind of thing and just pointing the cursor and shooting kind of thing um and I th it is based on um some tv show is it called vip i think yeah i think so i can't remember i think like the t there is that there was actually a tv show or something called vip i think that's what it's based on um but that's literally just the front cover sold me as a spot i'll have it for the collection um like you say might be bad uh i, th I think it is bad after looking at the video made by Jim Cadicarus. Um, but yeah, got that. <laughs> uh, this one, I've seen this on eBay for a little bit more. It's not exactly the lowest end. Rage Racer. That's really nice. Nice little shiny effect as well. Tell you what game I nearly bought today. I'll tell you in a sec. So this is by Namco. It's even got the demo as well, which is really cool. They're so really glad it's got uh, the demo. I like the, uh, yeah, I like the disc as well. So yeah, that's that's really nice condition. Uh, just apart from a little chip there, but it's it's all right though. Uh, yeah, tell you what, racing game I nearly bought today, and it's obviously a modern one um, for the Xbox One, Forza Four, Forza Horizon Four. I've, I've been after it for ages, and it's come down to like twenty five quid. So tempted, I nearly went out, reserved it at Smiths, and went out and got it, but. 
it's like I feel like I need to wait and get the ultimate edition because it's just it's so much money like it's it's crazy um it's just all the add-ons it's like 25 quid for a car VIP pack or something um there's like another one called treasure island or something like that um fortune island i think it's called expansion pack so i think it's like 60 quid or something daft like that for like the full-on pass and it's like i'm not just paying 25 quid am i for the game i might see it and think it's a bargain but it's really not so i might as well wait i'll wait like a year or something until they bring out an actual ultimate edition they already have anyway but it's like 75 quid i'll wait and try get it cheaper really annoying that you have to do that nowadays it really is Anyway, last game from this. Um, I'm going to have to uh, recase this at some point. I don't think it originally came in one of these anyway, one of these black cases. But it is Scooby-Doo and the Cybertrace. I've been wanting to try this out for a while as well. So it like, looks like a fun game. Um, it's got an old cash converter sticker there. So I, I do like my old uh, kids' games and stuff for PS1. Obviously love Rugrats, Search for Reptar. I love uh, like Monsters, Inc., Scare Island... Hercules, Tarzan, stuff like that. So, yeah, I like my kiddie games for PS1, I don't mind. <laughs> so, the higher end game, I don't know what you guys class as higher, but it's still a lot of money. I got this off eBay. It is. I had to get it as well. I just need to say, had to get it um, after playing it loads at Arcade Club. Um, obviously, I knew about this game anyway, and I'd seen gameplay, and I was like, oh, it, it looks amazing. Uh, yeah, at Arcade Club, I was thinking, I've got to get this when I get back. Got to get it. Uh, so it's really nice condition from eBay, Sunset Riders. So happy. So happy to have it finally. Does not have a hang tab, but it doesn't bother me. I've just got to find, I can't just recase it in any case because I've realised it's all nice and complete. Really nice condition. The manual's only very, very minimal wear and tear, like creases and stuff. You can't, yeah, you can only just about make them out. Um, but obviously I've, when I recase it, so I've got to recase it with one saying Konami. Because <laughs> it's got to say Konami there, I've just realised it can't be like, uh, can't be just any. So, uh, and I did notice, I think might be slightly sun faded there, possibly. But it's not really bad though, so absolutely buzzing to have that. Yeah. How many of you guys watching are fans of Sunset Riders? You've got to be, you've got to. It is literally one of the best retro games I've played. It's honestly no surprise why it's uh, worth quite a bit. So, last pick up, guys. It is a console. Handheld console. Used to previously own this, but um, it was not complete. And I ended up just getting rid ages ago when I really needed some money. It was months and months ago. Um, so, yeah. Really nice handheld. Uh, it's not like the rarest or anything, but it's really nice condition, though. So it is the Tetris Game Boy. I paid 75 quid for this. Um, I, I think it was like was it 70, 75? Might have even been 70, actually. Might have been. It was either 70 or 75. Um, so this was from a guy on the game groups, regular seller, top guy, Matt. So it's got a little bit of wear there. Looks like a previous sticker was there or something. A little bit of um, crease in there. But the box overall is really nice. Proper nice it is. So let's unpack it and show you guys. All the tray is still there. Everything bagged and whatever. I'll tell you what I did take though. What I did take from the original um, Tetris Game Boy console that I owned. I kept... I'm sure I kept these. It was... Let me just pop this box to one side. Have it nicely displayed there. It was it was just these these paperwork because that they just looked a bit unusual. Um, so this this is about like Nintendo Diamond Service. Um, it's just like about just support and whatever um, if it requires service due to a warranty fault and all that. And then obviously there was like an advertisement for Nintendo Magazine system. That looks ace. <laughs> I love keeping these. So I got that. And then it's also a hardware precautions slash maintenance thing there. Epilepsy warning and all that lot. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure it was these documents that I... Uh, the warning ones and stuff in the diamond service. I kept these from the original. I thought I'm not trading these in as well with it. 
I'm going to take these out just in case I pick up one in the future and it doesn't have these, which this one didn't. So I've added these in. <laughs> uh, so obviously you've got your Game Boy manual, your Tetris one. The only thing on the back, um, it's just got a bit of a, where it's folded, it's a bit of a bad fold there. So tell you what, I might be able to either source one in future um, if I'm buying something off the group, something, a bundle. Uh, I did see one on the groups, but... I didn't want, kind of want to say, oh yeah, I'll just take that, because that's the only thing I needed. So, um, I might look in like the bargain boxes or whatever. There, there might be some, because some sellers, obviously, at the Doncaster Video Game Market, they have ma um, manuals just in boxes and whatever, don't the bundles of them. So, yeah, I'll, I just need to source a, a nice manual if I, if I want to upgrade that one, basically. It's not the worst, anyway. So, everything is still, like, all in baggies and stuff. Um, that's really nice, no fading whatsoever, I'll show you in a minute. So obviously, I'm sure you'll see in a Tetris car anyway, it's in a nice little protector. The headphones are all still sealed and unopened, which is um, quite rare to see in these. So headphones are all bagged up and new and sealed. And then there's the cable. And then I'll show you the Game Boy. It is gorgeous, it is so nice. No fading or... or um, you know, yellowing at all. Absolutely so nice. Like, you can obviously see the, the serial number, like, the number on it. Oh, really nice, that. And then there's absolutely no uh, corrosion or whatever in the compartment. Proper nice, that is. So that's a, that's a really nice example of a Game Boy as well. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 70 when I bought this. So that is really good. Um... Yeah, that's what it's called, DMG. So I've pretty much paid, like, the going rate for this, but the condition, though, overall, um, including the inside content, obviously, um, be worth a bit more, to be honest. So that really was a bargain from the game groups. It really was. So, yeah, awesome example of a DMG Tetris Game Boy, that one. So, guys, um, this has been an absolute banger of an episode, if I may say so myself. I, th I think it's been got some decent additions in here guys really have um i'm absolutely buzzing uh, I've, I've been so excited to show you all these i think there's some um amazing additions to the collection so really hope you've enjoyed it guys and let me know feel free to drop some comments uh in the comment section down below obviously let me know about your collections what you've been picking up and whatever and you can let me know whether you're going to doncaster video game market do feel free to say hi because i won't recognize all of you and whatever it's only at arcade club that i obviously started to put like loads of um what is it faces to names and all that so it's only then i got to know more people so do feel free to say hi if you see me like you know deep in some video games hunting and whatever in my own little world <laughs> so uh yeah it'd be absolutely awesome to see any of you guys going so take care guys and i will see you in a bit in the next pickups video see you in a bit guys